Hi, this is Shadi and today I have a few interesting stories to share with you. This is from Masahiko Kimura's My Judo or his autobiography. Um, it's a great sequences of stories and it really shows his character and also there's a lot of funny incidents in those stories. So uh, this is back when he was a child or growing up as a teen and also as an adult. So. You can see a lot of things change, but at the same time, he is still the same uh, courageous uh, person that he is. So uh, the first story was back when he was in his second year of middle school. And there was one of the members of the judo club of, of his uh, Chinzei middle school. His name was Lida. He competed for the uh, position. Uh, of the second year student captain's team and he lost it was a loss against of course Kimura himself and he became very jealous and developed a hatred towards Kimura and he says that on a Saturday of June on my way to the school dojo he walked up to me and said I have a little business with you so come with me uh, so we all know when someone says that I have unfinished business so on and so forth that it's gonna end uh, pretty much in an ugly matter so he said you are impudent I am going to get you today and took out a knife from his pocket and tried to thrust and stab Kimura in the stomach but Kimura evaded it successfully but the knife uh, stabbed Kimura in the uh, buttocks so uh, Lida got on his bicycle quickly and started to run away. So Kimura, a, imagine a 12 or 13 year old Kimura uh, with his hand on his buttock that stabbed. He was running after him uh, while bleeding. So he finally got to his house. He stayed uh, outside. The uh, kid Lida went and hid in his house. So he did not come out. His parents came out and apologized to him. Uh, they said, and I quote, our son cut his own hand when he stabbed you and in his bed now a doctor in on, is on his way uh, so his injury turned out to be very serious and uh, and Kimura finally said that he had to stay away from judo for 20 days so uh, getting stabbed and only staying away for three weeks of judo is is a lot you know especially when being 12 or 13 uh, also uh, this kid's parents are just terrible. So the next one happened when he was in his third year of middle school. So the year right after that one. And uh, he was challenged by an individual named K. Uh, Kimura wanted this uh, man to, this person to remain anonymous. So he just said K, uh, who was considered the number one street fighter. So he was no uh, judoka. And uh, he was the toughest among all middle schoolers in that area. Uh, he was a student of Kumamoto Commerce Middle School. Uh, he was very small but very strong and also uh, he was very known for his knife skills in the streets. Uh, keep in mind this is not uncommon uh, even though there are little kids yes but uh, especially I'm sure a lot of people can uh, share a lot of stories for example me when where I grew up in the uh, rough part of town uh, there was this uh, thing that street fighters used to do is that uh, you know that little blade that you put in the uh, razor that the barbers use uh, in order to like straighten your beard or carve your neck uh, so that little blade uh, you can buy it for like a few cents they remove it for the for sanitary reasons they put alcohol uh, they would put that little blade in their mouth and either spit it in their opponent's face or they can like in case of emergency pull it out of their mouth and just start slashing so uh, just thinking about it uh, it would often happen in nightclubs that when they go out clubbing I never encountered any of these people thankfully but usually uh, when I would go to school etc like they were big names and they would talk about oh he pulled out a razor uh, this one got slashed so on and so forth and you would see them on the streets with like band-aids etc so it was a pretty serious thing so it was not uncommon that, that uh, people especially kids uh, to have hidden weapons and keep in mind this is the 1930s so 
things were way rougher in, in my opinion probably that generation the world war ii pre-world war ii generation so uh he found uh, so kimura was on his way um back from the butoku den and uh he was crossing the nagaroku bridge uh and there he found him he said hold it right there come with me uh they walked to the park and he said you are kimura aren't you uh so this was the first time uh they were in contact they made contact with each other uh they were about about one meter away from each other and then he pulled out a tanto a tanto uh is like the the uh, wooden knife you see in aikido but obviously there are real ones with a blade so it's not like a small knife but it's like almost a a short sword kind of so he started to thrust towards kimura he evaded it he grabbed him and threw him hard on the ground and uh, he says i am k i surrender you are strong uh he apologized to him and after this so k was known that whenever k uh, would lose a fight his whole family would come out and take revenge for him so pretty much like a mob mentality but after that fight none of his parents came to find kimura so uh it means some uh, two things so first of all back then he was the uh, ch school's champion throughout the years before even becoming the all japan champion so i'm pretty sure he had a very tough uh, reputation of being a judoka and very tough opponent hence why the number one street fighter k went after him but nonetheless he was no match to kimura so the last story or the third story it was in the summer of 1946 just right after the second world war to the second world war and uh keep in mind this was probably a very terrible environment for everyone uh, you had the uh, martial law the imperial regime uh the japanese lost the war so uh, all of it a lot of thuggish uh, behaviors can easily happen so uh, one day uh, a jeep stopped in front of Kimura's house and a number of neighbors gathered around the house it was a military police jeep and back then everyone was afraid of the military police so uh, he thought Kimura he said the time has finally come I do not care what happens to me so uh, when usually when the military police back then would come up to your house they, you probably got arrested and you were never heard from again so uh they looked uh, really good they didn't have any mean faces there was no uh like animosity uh, they were smiling at him and the uh interpreter said this is captain shepherd of the military police so the uh captain was not uh, a japanese hence they needed an interpreter and he pointed out uh, the other uh, uh, military policemen and represented him to Kimura and they even gave him two uh, cakes and said if you do not mind we would like you to come to the headquarter with us uh, this is all with the talk of the headquarter with the interpreter while he was uh, uh, in the back seat of the jeep and going on their way to the station so uh, he thought that it was probably due to an incident that happened a week earlier so uh, he was what happened a week earlier was that uh, he was in line standing in a line of 60 to 70 people waiting for the train at the at the at the train station uh, near Kumamoto city and he was reading the paper and suddenly four uh, military police officers passed uh, in that line and they cut through forcibly so they did not wait in line and uh, when I when he turned his eyes to them he found them shouting uh, jap jap repeatedly so if you watch the movie pearl harbor you would know what this uh, slur means uh, so one of them grabbed a japanese man uh, at the front of the line by the collar he pulled him towards him and then made like a like a gun gesture with like his thumb and his uh, pointing finger and struck uh, the man on his nose so the japanese man fell down and we was in a lot of pain covering his face uh, so the military policemen did this to everyone in the line and they started to go backwards they did that even to women 
uh, when someone did not go down from that strike to the nose, they would uh, deliver another strike. And so uh, Kimura's turn was approaching and uh, he was still trying to figure out what to do. Uh, so his turn came up and one of the uh, police officers extended his arm and trying to grab Kimura's lapel. So he struck him with a hand full of force. So uh, their facial expressions suddenly changed and the uh, four uh, policemen surrounded him and took him again to the Nagaroku bridge where he met Kei. Um, so he says, this was not an ordinary fight for me. I had to win this fight to defend the honor of Judo. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that I talked about this in my uh, street fight video, that, the one that I did very recently. And I said that, you know, you have to protect the weak and you have to uh, use this skill for the good of society and not um, to become basically a bully. And this is what I think he meant by I have to defend the honor of judo. So one of them uh, threw a right hand to Kimura's face. He blocked it with his left arm and kicked him in the groin with full force. And then he went down. Keep in mind, uh, Masahiko Kimura I trained also in Goju Ryu Karate, so striking was not unfamiliar to him and also he had uh, very conditioned hands. So he turned back, he saw another uh, military policeman uh, extending his arm to attack him, trying to grab him from behind. Uh, he released the grip and threw him with Seonage into the river from the bridge. So the other two were watching the scene with ama amazement, so there were four policemen. So one, so they charged at him one by one. He delivered a headbutt to one of them. Uh, he was knocked out immediately. And the last one, the last one, uh, this is actually very funny. So the last one came at him. So Kimura grabbed him by his balls with full force. Um, and this is really funny. He said, <laughs> he says, ever since I was in junior high school, I have been called master uh, groin squeezer in and had absolute confidence in his, in this technique so this is pretty funny that uh you know he threw people with all these good techniques and strikes etc and uh he finished off one of the military police officers with like a really tight <laughs> groin squeeze so this is very funny and also it shows the reality of things this is not just regular randori so uh he asked the uh, the people that were watching from away from the bridge to keep it secret because he would get in a lot of trouble because back then like i said everyone was afraid of the military police but someone told on him and uh it was not a concern so back so let's go back to the story so they took him to the uh, headquarters they went to his house the, and went to the headquarters with him and captain shepherd said to him thank you for punishing the rogue mps uh, they were the worst ones in our unit they have assaulted women ate and drank without paying threatened people with a pistol uh, we were about to be forced to punish them uh, they are all so depressed after you beat them up i am truly thankful to you i heard that you are the greatest judo master in japan and that is true because he was uh, winning his, the All Japan titles back then. So uh, yes, that was true. Uh, I have a request to you. Could you teach us Judo once or twice a week? Of course, we will pay you. I myself am anxious to learn Judo. Uh, after that, Kimura uh, agreed. He taught them only one hour a week. Captain Shepard, lucky Captain Shepard, earned his first degree black belt just one year later. So. Uh, this, these stories are incredible from his uh, book uh, Waga Judo or My Judo. I'll link uh, an article that takes from the book if you want to read more about it. And uh, this is, these stories are just uh, incredible and it really shows how fierce and how relentless he was. And also he did not take loss lightly. I talked about his uh, comeback to competitions. Uh, also, how uh, he could not be provoked, for example, when uh, Hiryo Gracie put that tomb uh, at the Maracana, he says that after seeing this, I wanted to give him a concussion. So uh, he had his pride, uh, 
he, he also had a lot of love for judo he wanted to defend the honor of judo against these terrible men and he did do so so uh, this man can teach us many things it's not just the uh Helio versus Kimura or the Ude Garami that we say Kimura but there's just so many stories that we can learn from him I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, three stories if you have anything else to add please share it down below and of course please consider supporting me on patreon I have exclusive content for the patrons this was Shadi and thank you